Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader Void Shadows DLC all companions in a game we're gonna rank them from best to worst on top of it all I'm gonna give party compositions and what's best to play with well, let's not waste time and let's go are you ready for the warhammer 40k rogue trader as i am the emperor protects let's begin with the best companion in the game Cassia Orcelio, Ship's Navigator, the most OP companion in the game, companion that has one of the best items in the game, and the ship's main engine, Warp Master, as well as the best skill set for ship combat, including Warp Wave and Shallow Jump. All of that is Cassia's doing. Cassia, if supported by a good officer, can clear most of the fights on unfair difficulty in the start of the very first round, believe it or not. Cassia is the main buffer in the game with Reveal the Light, with Glimpse of Fate. She's also one of the best single target bursters in the game with Immolate the Soul and the other one that also deals single, single target damage. She is one of the best debuffers in a game with Warp Cursed Unleashed and with a Waking Nightmare. And she's got a bunch of utility skills that also deal damage with Point of Curiosity, Notch of Purpose. Or she can dominate enemies and so on. And on top of it all, she's got the best AoE spell in a game that would be Lidless Stare. And to top it all off, when she casts Navigator spells, she reduces Veil Degradation absolutely the most useful companion in the game by far and the strongest one would be Cassia. as far as skill checks go she's great at lore warp and she's great at awareness and basically you don't need anything else from Cassia. she is there for lore warp absolutely the best freaking thing that exists in a game would be Cassia or celia number one spot goes to Cassia. On spot number two, as the best companion in a game, would be Pascal. Pascal is the ship's main tech, and he can be played in a lot of different ways, as a flat tank, as a squishy sniper, as AoE damage, as single target melee damage, as a squishy that casts traps, debuffs enemies, he does it all. I also like to call Pascal, know it all Pascal, because Pascal is the best companion as far as skill checks go, and one of the funniest companions to play with. Pascal, if played as a grand strategist, will always play first, debuff enemies, and control the field. If played as a bounty hunter, he can immobilize enemies, no matter how you decide to play. If played as assassin, he will burst enemies like crazy with melee attacks. Pascal offers the best build variety in a game. It's like having four or five different companions into one. And then you pick how you want to play Pascal. After the OP Cassia, this is the best normal companion in the game. And the most useful one. I could call him the most useful one by far. There is no replacement for, for Pascal and there is no replacement for Cassia. All other companions can be replaced, but not those two. On spot number three, we got Space Wolf Ulfar. He was the worst companion in Vanilla and in pre-release version. And now, in Void Shadows DLC, he is by far one of the best companions. Now, why do I say so? Ulfar is absolutely crazy uh, in terms of everything. Damage, damage output, athletics check stats overall characteristics he refuses to die in combat he cannot be killed that's his curse he always comes back and the sheer tankiness and the amount of different combos that you can do with versatility on ulfar is absolutely insane he actually feels like a real space marine he feels like a space wolf he's strong as he should be as one of the emperor's angels ulfar deserves spot number three 
The next one in power would be Kibela. Kibela is the new archetype, or better to say she's a blade dancer that got introduced in a Void Shadows DLC. And Kibela, he, not only that she is fun to play, okay, she is also extremely useful in combat. Kibela is by far the best single target damage in a game, the best boss killer in a game. And that's all because of the Blade Dancer's ulti. Death Waltz is nuts. Completely nuts. Once Kibela casts all of her self buffs, and once she acquires some of the buffs from companions, when you go in there and you cast Death Waltz, she one shots every single boss in a game on unfair difficulty. Her ulti is the most broken ulti in the game and that's why Kibela is on spot number four she is a bit useless okay with bunch of enemies and so on not as good as Cassia for example but single target damage she deals way much more than Cassia and Pascal and Ulfar combined but she relies heavily on support on characters around her on buffs and so on while Ulfar and Cassia, for example, are self-sustained companions. Spot number four goes to Kibela. Spot number five, Sister Argenta. From the best companion in a game in pre-release, she's on spot number five now. Because the others are just stronger. But what's with Argenta right now? Argenta is now a bit weaker in the start of the game. She scales off very solid in like mid-game, Act 3 and so on. She becomes completely insane in Act 4. So, she scales up. She's not as useful as she used to be. But, you need a Demolitionist in your team. You need burst damage, okay? You need someone to shoot, to reach enemies far away and so on. To clear all of those remains from Cassia. Argenta clears the remains perfectly well. And also, there's nothing sweeter than you have, like, I don't know, 10 crits with a bolter in a row. Especially with a heavy bolter, very fun to play with. Argenta takes spot number 5. The next in line is Heinrichs von Kellex, the Inquisitor. Heinrichs is not that good at skill checks. Uh, to be more precise, he's very bad at skill checks. He's not even that good in characteristics and so on, but Heinrichs... Heinrichs is extremely powerful when played as a Psyker and when played with his crazy buffs, okay? Because Heinrichs is a mix of a Biomancer and a Sanctic. Two best Psykers for buffs and debuffs. Heinrichs is absolutely insane. He gives extra turns. He gives more action points and movement points. He hurts a lot through melee damage as an Assassin. He gives AoE buffs through the Hammer of the Emperor and through the, through the Word of the Emperor. He's got crazy buffs single target uh, with Iron Arm. He can reach enemies far away with Purse Soul. Absolutely the full mix of abilities and skills in a game would be Heinrichs. He's extremely underrated and he does it all in combat. Heinrichs does it all. You want your party to be untouchable, then you need to have Heinrichs in your team. Spot number 6 goes to Heinrichs von Kellogg. On spot number 7, we got Irliet. With the build that I gave to Irliet, along on Great Awareness and on Great Lord Xenos and Demolition, she can be changed for Argenta. Okay, but on the build that I gave, she deals way much more damage than Argenta on single targets. What Kibela does in melee to single target, that's what Irliet does with the build that gives 300% plus double crit with snipers from like 5 screens away. Okay, so if you want to buzz dead, all you need to do is hunt down the prey and use her wild hunt ulti and the boss will be dead. Iliet is very good in that regard and she's also great for the leftovers from Cassia because she snipes, okay, then she shoots again and again and again and you do it as a sniper. Irliet goes on spot number 7. On spot number 8, we got Seneschal Abelard Versarion. From the best freaking tank in the game, now Ulfar is just straight up better. Everything that Ulfar does, okay, also 
can be said for Abelard, but Ulfar is just better. He's got more versatility. Maybe you can make Abelard a bit tankier than Ulfar, but there is no bloody point anymore, okay? And Abelard is just... He fell off with Ulfar buff. He was great in pre-release, but now in Void Shadows DLC, he can be there, okay, for Athletics, for Carouse, and so on. And Abelard is the most useful companion in Prologue, in Chapter 1 and in Chapter 2. Once you find Ulfar, the rest 50% of the game, at 3, 4, 5, belongs to Ulfar, while the start of the game now belongs to Abelard. Abelard is just a weaker version of Ulfar in late game. And that's why I gave him spot number 8. Spot number 9 goes to Jaya Heidari. Jaya is an officer that is extremely good at all skill checks, okay? Only Pascal comes close to Jaya as far as variety in skill checks go. She is crazy good at that. And she is there to trigger ulti non-stop as a Master Tactician. If you go and opt in for the Master Tactician, that is Jaya is very good to have in a team when your rogue trader is not an officer. Aside from that, if you are an officer, and if you have Cassia as well, then she becomes useless. So, that's why she's on spot number 9. On spot number 10 would be Marajai. Everything that Heinrichs does, Marajai does the same, only slightly worse. Marajai is not that good at skill checks, Marajai thrives in combat only, but again, he is selfish, a self-buffer, while Heinrichs does everything the same with a similar damage. Only Heinrichs supports the entire team, while Marajai doesn't care about anyone at all. Marajai is on spot number 10. On spot number 11, the final spot would be Idira Tlas, the Psyche. Why so low, you might ask? She's unstable, okay? She can deal more damage to her own team than to the actual enemies. Because of the peril, every time when you cast something, you, you can knock someone out on your own. Then your companions can skip turns. Idira is completely unstable. Aside from that, she's got great skills, okay? Idira has a lot of good skills, a lot of great debuffs, a lot of great buffs, AoE buffs. She can skip rounds as well. She, she's got plenty of good AoE strikes like Psychic Assault and so on and she can deal a lot of damage but then again there is a penalty on all of that with Idira and that's why she's on a less spot she's unstable she can ruin fights completely she can also annihilate fights everything that you plan basically during the fight can be destroyed in one second because of Idira you want chaos on a battlefield then you're gonna have Idira in your team now, of course, there are companions. There is Shorda, there is Winterscale, and there is Uralon as secret companions. I won't cover them up because they come way too late in the game, only for Act 5, basically. So, we're gonna skip talking about them. There is no need. What we're gonna speak now is the best team composition in the game. This is extremely simple. If your main rogue trader is an officer archetype, any officer, grand strategist or a master tactician, you want to have Cassia, Pascal, Kibela, Heinrichs or Marajai, where Kibela is the strongest one out of those two, Ulfar or Abelard on spot number four and on spot number five, Argenta or Iliad. I would recommend for the main rogue trader as an officer to have Cassia. Cassia, Pascal, Kibela, Ulfar, and Argenta. That's the best setup. If main rogue trader is any other archetype but officer, okay? So everything, like from soldier to bounty hunter, it doesn't matter. Any other, all psychers combined. Then you're gonna need Cassia, Pascal, Jai, Heidari, okay? Because you need an officer now in your team. And now you pick between Ulfar, Kibela, Heinrichs, and Abelard, where I highly recommend Ulfar, and Argenta or Iliad, where I recommend Argenta. And that's the full party composition and how you should play. If you enjoyed this video and if you found it helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll be seeing you on the next one. Thanks for watching.